Thank you for tuning in and welcome to Hobby Tips. Today we're gonna have fun with the tin can. And uh, one of the first pieces of homemade scenery I ever made was actually made from a tin can. After that I turned to uh, toilet rolls and cereal box, cardboard, stuff like that. And I had a awful looking necromunda table with the terrain that came in the box with unpainted bulkheads along with a lot of unpainted home built trash heaps so <laughs> today i'm going to uh, rectify my grim past and try to make something that actually looks good the plan is to make a silo like the bandua hobby silos i painted up a few weeks ago you can see those here and funnily enough they are approximately the size of a uh, tin can so there would be some money to uh, to be saved there if you just want silos uh, i think they look good though and i'm happy with them so anyhow we'll just make the one silo in this video and then i'll probably make some more uh, terrain off camera from these but Right now, I just want to keep it simple because this is a hobby tip, and we want it to be uh, to be easy. So first of all, uh, I've cleaned the tin can, and it's starting to rust a bit just by uh, being out here in the hobby shed. First things first, I want to put a, a lid on it. You could just use this area, but it looks like a top-down tin can like this, I think. So I have some uh, MDF left from the silos I mentioned before but you could just cut a piece of cardboard or whatever basically or look around find a coaster or stuff like that that would fit on top uh, easiest thing would just be to uh, cut it from the cardboard and then put it down here so that it's stable anyhow I'm gonna use this one and glue that on to the can with my trusty jug of PVA glue. And once again, I'm kicking myself for not getting a glue gun. That would be so much easier and so much faster. I really need a hot glue gun. I just keep forgetting to pick one up. I'm not just gonna paint that up. We're gonna add a bit of detail. You remember the kebab sticks from earlier? I wanna make uh, a ladder from those so that the uh, minis have a chance to actually go up there and use it for a shooting position. So, two of these. And to put in between you could just cut up matches or another stick and stuff like that, but I began um, saving the cotton sticks I use for cleaning my airbrush. Because I figured at some point a piece of plastic tube thing like this would be uh, would be handy for a hobby project like here on the ladders okay so that was probably not the best way of making a stair um, the plastic really didn't want to stick to the wood so I ended up uh, pinning the top and the bottom step with a bit of paper clip and now it's pretty stable anyhow now I'll put some glue on the can and then let it sit on that so while the glue is drying over there I'm gonna start working on uh, another detail uh, using some straw and what I want to do is to make some piping going from the top of the container and around the top edge and down to the ground and um, straws don't look good if you bend them all the way around they're sent to, uh, to fold so what we'll do instead is Cut off a piece here, and likewise here. Put some glue on this one. Boop it in here. As now we have a straw that can easily bend all the way over. So I uh, put the straws together with a bit of glue and some. Uh, slim masking tape and uh, as this part looks a bit rough I'm gonna take a 
stick a label to make it smooth. And then it's just a matter of attaching it to the tank uh, in a way that we like. For a long time I've kept a little bag of watch parts from old wristwatches for when I uh, decorate basils. Now I've taken uh, one of those little parts and glued it to a paper clip with super glue. I'll then clip it off, dip the tip in white glue and push it into a hole in the straw. Like this. Obviously we could just leave it here, but I decided I want to add a bit more detail to make it seem a bit more uh, Shadow War Armageddon-ish. So I'll drill a hole into the side here and take some snake chain from uh, Gale Force 9. I'll drill a hole into the side of the straw. And that's the great thing about this kind of scenery. The mechanical aspect, or the industrial aspect, really doesn't have to make any sense whatsoever. And I'll need a pin here to hold it in place. That's easily added. And with that, I'll uh, I'll call it. It would be easy to add tons of more detail and also easy to just make new ones. So for the simplicity's sake of this video, we'll call it here and I'll, I'll give it some uh, hardware store brand uh, gray primer. Right, so let's get some paint on this. I have some uh, dark green for starters. And then some sick green without cleaning the cup in between but no other attempts at mixing. And there's still a tiny bit of sick green in the airbrush, that's okay. We're just gonna put some scorpion green into the mix. I don't worry about the the roof of the tank because I'm going to paint that over so it's all about the transition down here so now I'm gonna take some gunmetal and paint in the roof and the details and now for some uh, Nuln oil for all the metal areas and for the areas between the metal and the green. And next, a dry brush of chainmail silver. And those of you who've been following these terrain videos will most certainly recognize most of what's going on. And if it's getting tiresome, seeing the same paint scheme being applied over and over again, just let me know and I'll stick to filming the creation process and then snap to the finished result. And I won't bother dry brushing the pipes themselves because I'm gonna, oh, the straws, as, as usual, I'm gonna paint those over with typhus corrosion. Now, the typhus corrosion, and that'll be for the pipes, but not the masking tape part. And like on the other silos, I'll also make some, uh, some patches of it in the green area for some nice uh, variation and Risa Rust next. After that, some secret weapon sewer water. And first of all, I'll use this to make a pool around here where the glue has been so kind as to give some fantastic texture and to make some lines down these. 
and I figure you can be quite cartoonish with this because you want it to be visible on the tabletop. And finally, I'll add a bit of dabs on it here and there. Again, for the variation, mainly towards the bottom. So, I'm really happy with it, as it looks now. So now I'm gonna give it some uh, matte varnish. And then I'm gonna add just a bit more sewer water up here to enforce the pool and to make sure it gets the uh, the glosh effect. I don't want it to be shiny down here, but the pool definitely. And here it is, all done and ready for the battlefield. I'm quite happy with it. It took a minimum of effort. I spent no money on it, and if you compare it to the silos next to it that I bought from Bandua War Games, I'd say these were probably a bit faster to put together, but <laughs> other than that, I think it's a, a pretty neat little piece of scenery. That's it from here for now. <clears throat> um, next week uh, we're gonna look at some more uh, scratch build scenery on Friday and some more laser cut kits on Wednesday. So uh, tune in for that, take care and bye bye!